So far this semester, you have been introduced to the four different types of market structure that economists often refer to. And we can highlight these on a spectrum that goes from perfect competition through to monopoly. Beginning with perfect competition, well here there are potentially an infinite number of buyers and sellers, each selling a homogeneous product. We then have monopolistic competition, where there are again a large number of buyers and sellers, but this time each seller sells a slightly differentiated product. Examples here include maybe your local hairdresser or bed and breakfast operators. In oligopoly, there are a few firms, each of whom recognises their mutual interdependence with one another. Examples here include commodity industries, such as salt, cement, and consumer industry, such as the automobile industry. Finally, we have monopoly, where there is only one firm in the industry. Your local water supplier is an example. As we move along this spectrum, the degree of price competition will fall and prices will, de prices will deviate significantly from marginal cost. At the same time, the degree of market concentration will also increase. In the real world, the big question for economists is how we might measure the degree of competition in a market. This is an important question, especially for industry regulators who wish to ensure consumers are getting a fair deal. Fortunately, economists have come up with solutions, and these involve calculating so-called concentration ratios. A concentration ratio is simply a measure of seller concentration in a market. These are based upon a seller's market share, which is calculated from their sales revenue. There are several concentration ratios, and excuse the pun, but we'll concentrate on just two of them. The easiest measure is a simple concentration ratio, or CN for short. This is simply the percentage of the value of sales accounted for by the N largest firms in the industry or market. Its value ranges between 0 and 100%, with higher measures equating to higher levels of concentration and applying less price competition. N is arbitrarily decided by the researcher. Let us consider an example. Consider an industry with market shares distributed as follows. What in this case is a C4 ratio? Well, simply we add up the market shares of the top four firms. And in this case, we get 80%, which may imply a highly oligopolistic market. However, the simple concentration ratio has a flaw because it doesn't take account of the size distribution of firms. For instance, in our example, one firm and half the market, while the other firms are essentially much smaller and niche players. Our C4 ratio does not really capture this and may give a distorted view of market competition. Fortunately, economists have sought to resolve this problem by instead using the market shares of each firm in the market and calculating a Herfindahl index. This involves squaring this market share of each firm and calculating their sum. The Herfindahl takes a value between 0 and 10,000, where 0 represents perfect competition and 10,000 is a pure monopoly. Oh, and a value of 5,000 represents a duopoly. You'll need your calculators to work these out. And from our earlier data, we can calculate a Herfindahl index of 2,918. Again, this would imply an oligopolistic market structure, perhaps, but perhaps one closer to a duopoly than, say, monopolistic competition. Okay. 
Hopefully you get the idea. Now it is your turn. Here are some data for the UK beer industry. Can you calculate this time the C3 index and the Herfindahl index? I'll give you two to three minutes to grab your calculator and work them out. OK, for the C3, you need this time to add up the market share of the top three firms in the industry. Here we get 75%. For the Herfindahl, you need to take the square of each firm's market share and add them up. You get this time 2,306. What do these figures tell you? Yes, we're again talking about an oligopoly, but looking at the Herfindahl index, you can see that the market is slightly more concentrated than our earlier example. Finally, some questions for you to think about. First, do you think the Herfindahl is a better measure of competition than the simple concentration ratio? I think the answer there must be yes, because the Herfindahl takes account of all the data in the market. Second, is it possible to obtain data on the market shares of every firm in an industry. Indeed, this can often be nigh on impossible. Think about obtaining the market shares of individual bed and breakfast operators in the hotel and accommodation market. This can make the Herfindahl index very difficult and costly to calculate.